Okay, uh, hello, my name is Brett Halpern. I am the Scientific Director of the AI Horizons Network, and this is our seminar series. Uh, our speaker today is Hui Wu of IBM Research in Yorktown on interactive image search based on natural language feedback. Uh, Hui received her PhD uh, in computer science from UNC Charlotte in 2015. She is a vision and image researcher and uh, without further ado, Hui, I'll hand it over to you. Hi. Thank you. Thank you for the introduction. All right. So I'll go ahead with the talk. So in this talk, we um, focus on the topic of image retrieval and uh, why we are interested in this. Uh, well, image retrieval or image search systems, they are very pervasive in our daily lives, um, ranging from retail or specialized domains, such as medical image analysis. Even though image retrieval has been intensely studied um, in information retrieval or computer vision, However, um, many commercial systems out there are still heavily relying on keyword labels or image metadata. So the reason because of this is that um, image retrieval is actually a very challenging problem. All right. So I'm using this example in fashion search to highlight why image retrieval can be very challenging. Say a, uh, a user uh, find a find an interesting look that inspires her, and she wants to find this look, similar look uh, from a online store. So using um, text search, the user had to um, put, had to write down uh, in detail the visual information of this image, and in this image, the detail uh, even though you can you might put down some high level description such as black lace dress, but this information can really um, really miss important features in the image, such as the intricate lace uh, position and also the silhouette of the dress. Okay. Um, also, um, many search engines use keywords to help filter out search results. Um, however, this, these labels, they are highly generic and shared across a range of images. Um, and therefore, it's very hard to narrow down the search results. On top of this, a lot of the visual features that are meaningful to end users can be very ambiguous and subjective. For example, in previous study, uh, it's shown that when we are applying certain uh, visual attributes, there are high disagreement level between, uh, among all, all end users. So having in mind all these challenges, um, we envision a new, um, a new image, interactive image search tool that can attempt to address these challenges. Okay, so here is how we envision it works. All right, at a, start, at a starting point of the search, the user might choose to um, upload a photo or directly input a text query about the desired image then this in initial input can help the user to find a very coarse uh, ranking of the initial results. So this work, so the technology that can be used here are uh, existing technology. So now we wanna improve upon this. After we have the initial retrieve the result, we, we would like to give the user the ability to provide uh, natural language based feedback. And in this case, uh, the user might choose to uh, input a distinctive, um, a global color. Okay. So the results are updated. And the user can iteratively provide input. In this example, the user might say like the right one, but uh, with a different neckline. And uh, the result can be improved uh, over iterations. So this is our task. We would like to design um, a novel interactive image search framework that allows, allows the user to provide natural and flexible natural language feedback. 
And this is a very challenging problem. And so we choose a specific domain to test this idea. Um, so we choose fashion search in this talk. Um, so we choose this domain because fashion is a very large business and um, it actually inspired a lot of interesting work in computer vision. Right. Okay. But the uh, framework we propose in this, in this talk can be generic and apply to other image domains. Okay. So now that we narrowed down our, uh, our goal, we want to, we would like to design a interactive Im image search tool that allows for natural language feedback. So how, so how is it um, advantage, advantage, how is it beneficial than previous uh, image search tool um, that allows for interactive feedback? So interactive feedback for image search has been studied uh, for many years. The most well-known, uh, the most well, uh, well-known technology is called you utilize relevance uh, feedback, and here is roughly how it works. So, given an initial search result, user might pick uh, some images that are relevant or irrelevant to the desired search item. So, the system will take this input, re-rank all the results, and the user would uh, will continue provide feedback and this process continues. So the limitation is quite obvious because the user can only give this binary feedback. So, um, so the feedback the system can take is quite, um, reduces the information. To address some of the uh, limit, there are more recent work that incorporate semantic information in this, uh, in this feedback, specifically, they provide a list of attributes that the user can choose from. So when users are providing feedback, they can pick one of the attributes, such as open or pointy in this case, and the user can rank, can provide um, comparison between the desired image with, with the selected image on the dimensions of the selected attribute. And then the result will be re-ranked and the process can continue. Even though by introducing these semantic, uh, semantic dimensions, um, the user input is richer than relevant feedback. But still, this method requires the curation, a, a careful curation of a predefined set of attributes, which, is, which is, can be very challenging. And in fact, uh, in our experience, when we were, it is very hard to have a well-curated list um, that uh, we with very um, with with good user consensus beyond um, dozens of attributes. Okay. So now, before we dive into the technical detail of how our um, system is implemented, uh, we can see a demo of our work. So we re we reason recently showed this demo at CVPR demo track. So at the beginning, user can provide a text natural language query, and the system will return top match images. Then the user can refer to a specific image and pro provide relative feedback. Okay, so the results are refined at each step. Okay. All right. So having an idea of how this system um, would run in action, let's look at the uh, problem definition. Okay. So in our, in our paper, we narrow down the problem to make it more simplified and it can be um, addressed uh, is more relatively easily. So we make some simplification. At each round, we put the agent will pre present one image to one candidate image to the user. And the user will look at the image and compare to the desired search target. And the user will pr provide a natural language feedback that describes the dif differences of the, of the two images. The agent will take the feedback and present um, a, a re-ranked result. And this process will continue 
until the maximum round of interaction is reached or the user can end the query. Okay, so here is the network architecture. Um, to simplify, we just show how the agent can return the, uh, the next round of candidates given the, given the interaction at the round T. Okay. So we call our agent the dialogue manager who ha also has access to the to retrieval database of images. So the input of the to the dialogue manager at the dialogue turn T is the candidate image and also the user user's feedback on the candidate image. So the first component is called response encoder. Essentially, it combines the representation of the user input and the candidate image and obtain a unified representation. So it contains an image encoder and also a text encoder. And we simply have a few multi-layer perception um, on top of the on top of the, the of the both both modality. So the representation we get from this is called response representation, which represents the new information the dialogue manager it has received at this um, at a teeth interaction. Then we would like to update the dialogue history, and for this we have a state tracker, which is essentially based on a recurrent network, and output is a history representation, which aggregates the aggregated information up to the uh, dialogue T. So for all the database images, we also apply image encode, encoding. So each image is associated with the image representation. Now given this network, if it is properly trained, then at test time, test time or inference time, we can simply take the history encode uh, representation as T and simply take the one year's neighbor from the retrieval database and return that to the user. But how do we train the network? So there are actually two critical issues here. One is because this is an iterative process, so the dialogue manager needs to get, uh, re gets to, uh, get iterative input from the user. Therefore, the data collection part for this system is actually quite expensive. Second, um, because we're actually maximizing the ranking objective of the retrieval system, it is a non-differentiable non goal, and therefore it's hard to um, optimize using supervised learning. So let's look at how we address these issues. First, how do we obtain the training data for our dialogue manager? Okay, so to address this, we actually look at the, the user and the user role in detail. So actually at each round of the interaction, what the user does is actually look at two images, the target image and the returned candidate image or the reference image. And the user needs to describe the most, the most obvious or prominent visual differences between these two images. So when you describe the task this way, this task actually is very similar to captioning with two images at the input. So inspired by this, we, uh, we apply a image captioner and use it as a surrogate for real users. So this relative captioner can automatically generate sentences describing the differences between two images. And this is a new task. Therefore, we designed a task and we collected a new data set for this, for this task. Okay. We leveraged, we leveraged uh, a, a Amazon Mechanic Turk to collect the data. So here what you see is the data annotation interface. Essentially, we wanna situate the, the annotator in a retail image search setting. And the, that the his, there are some background history already provided here that shows the interaction between, um, between the user and also the 
uh, virtual shopping assistant. So the target image is always given to the annotator. And the annotator's role would be look, look at the returned image and try to finish the sentence that's in this text box. So notice that we, did not, we actually provide the prefix of the sentence to the user. And the user need, just need to apply uh, to finish this sentence by writing down a natural, uh, natural language-based phrase. So by constraining this, um, this input this way, um, we can avoid casual, casual input from the user that's irrelevant for search. Okay. So we apply this annotation interface for um, a shoes data set. And in the end, we obtain roughly 10K 20, 20 image pairs and 5K, um, 5K test pairs. For each pair of images, we have roughly we have one relative, uh, relative expression. Here are some uh, examples of the relative expression. And notice that these sentences, they can be of different lengths. And for some easy pairs, the user might simply use one attribute to describe the difference, such as the first image. Um, and interestingly, in some, when some images are very similar, the user might choose to give very specific and detailed feedback. Like the second example, users would say, um, this shoe has holes on the top. Okay. So given this training data, we applied a captioning, captioning model. So the captioning model takes as input the feature concatenation of both images. Um, and here you can see um, some examples of generated, uh, generated captions from the user simulator. While sometimes this user uh, simulator can make mistakes, uh, just like regular um, image captioning models, but overall we find that they can serve as, as a good proxy for real users, and most importantly, allow us to train the network with, with little to no um, annotation cost. Okay. So now we described how we can use the user simulator to represent the user and train the dialogue manager. So how do we actually train the network? We actually follow a two-stage of training. First, we use supervised pre-training that um, which can which can provide a good initialization of the model, and then followed by reinforcement learning, which can um, directly optimize the ranking objective. First, for supervised pre-training, we have the history representation ST, and also, we, for training, we have the ground truth image, which is the target image feature. And we also randomly sample an image feature from the database. So we want to train the network parameter so that the estimated history of representation can become closer and closer to the target feature. OK. So for the second step, we would like to directly optimize for the um, for the final objective, the ranking of the target image or the ground truth Im image. So here is what we do. So after we estimated the history representation, we can search for, sorry, we can search for the top k nearest neighbor in the retrieval database. And we can stochastically sample these, these examples and then we can continue this stochastic sampling for each round. And in the end, we reward the system using the final ranking percentile. Even though we can optimize the network in this uh, very basic way for policy gradient, however, because we actually have the user model or the environment model, that is the user simulator, we can actually leverage this known dynamics to have a more effective reinforcement learning um, process. So here is what we do. So because we know the user simulator, after we selected the top k nearest neighbor, 
for each for each one of these of these selected candidate images, we can basically using look ahead search and unroll the entire trajectory of the dialogue. And then for each of the trajectory, we can measure we can we can measure the final ranking of the target image. Then we can select the nearest neighbor that will result in the best ranking. Taking this as our optimal action at this at this dialog dialog turn, then we can update our loss function using cross entropy loss and optimize optimize our network this way. So in our experiment, we find out that this method can 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 produce lower variance and converges faster than conventional policy gradient method. So um, here are some quantitative results. Um, there are two sets of, set of results um, represented by the solid lines and the dashed lines. Let's look at the solid lines first. So these are the comparisons between um, different, different optimization methods. So the blue line is the pre-training using supervised learning. Um, it gives, it gives pre pretty good results but it's still lower than uh, two reinforced learning based methods. So the red one, red one is a reasoned method for image captioning. It actually achieved uh, achieve a really good result um, when it was published. So the green line is our final algorithm. As you can see, it, it produces the, um, the best perfor ranking performance. So the second set of results, a comparison to attribute, relative attribute based feedback. Um, we compared, so e, we used the rule based method, feedback mechanism to provide attribute feedback. So the subscripts you can see here, one, three, 10, represent how many attributes will be given feedback on at each, inter, um, at each interaction, uh, at each round of interaction. And, um, and the deep represent uh, relative attributes computed using um, deep features. So as you can see, um, there's a pretty huge gap between attribute-based feedback versus natural language-based feedback. Um, in summary, reinforcement learning-based optimization methods for our um, dialogue manager resulted in improved retrieval performance. And natural language-based feedback is more effective than attribute-based feedback. Okay. So we have to talk about our work uh, we did roughly last year. And we felt this is a very interesting problem. And this year, we did more follow-up work on this. So when we, when one of the direction we took is to actually study how can we improve the performance when additional knowledge about the images can be available to us. So remember in our first work, all the supervision came from users' feedback. But many, in many situations, for example, in fashion domain, there are other side information that could be um, incorporated to help help with learning. Okay. So inspired by this, um, we actually leverage visual attributes from text. So specifically for um, for Amazon product images, we scraped their website and obtained and uh, obtained uh, text meta metadata from the website. And we used a list of attributes to filter and obtain fashion-related labels. And we augment um, relative image caption dataset with these attribute labels and presented a new dataset, Fashion IQ. So here are some examples of fashion, this new dataset. Um, on the left, we provided some, provided some linguistic analysis of the relative expressions um, as you can see, the composition of the of the 
the content uh, and also the syntax of the of the relative captions are very rich. So we have about a third of them have comparative references between the target and the candidate image. And uh, roughly 20% of them has direct, has direct, both direct and comparative com uh, visual attributes. And mo actually most of the, most of the captions contains more than attributes in one sentence. So compared to the um, shoes data set we used in the first paper, um, Fashion IQ data set contains five times more relative caption, and it contains this information of real product images. And because the attribute labels for uh, fashion attire or fashion apparel are much more easy to easily to obtain, so this this new data set also allows investigation of using natural language feedback in conjunction with attribute information for training. <clears throat> so here the table shows some statistics about this new data set. <coughs> and uh, here are um, a few key uh, keywords we discovered from this new data set. As you can see, it's uh, very rich and entirely um, uh, open-ended. So in summary, for this, for this work, we investigated natural language-based user feedback for interactive image retrieval and showed evidence that this is indeed a more natural and effective way to perform image search. But from this experience, we also realized that this is a very challenging problem and we're just scratching the surface to address this problem. There are quite a few directions we are very interested in uh, working on right now to improve this work. So the first one is the data issue. So as we said, the user simulator provides a very low cost way to train the model. However, user simulator itself is uh, also a challenging problem. problem. It makes mistakes and also it doesn't take, take into account users uh, personal preference or vocabulary, fa fashion expertise. Okay, so one direction is to how to how actually do we improve the performance of the user simulator. Second, right now the with the problem problem definition, the user you, the user communicate while provide providing natural language feedback, and and the agent only pro, uh, provide uh, interact using images. So it might be very beneficial if the user can also can also choose to ask clarif clarification questions and actively seek out useful um, useful attributes to use, uh, to obtain feedback on. Also, we uh, in our new work we also experimented with incorporating uh, site information um, and apply that to fashion IQ data set. We, we found that it is indeed beneficial to incorporate site information for retrieval, um, but um, we're, just, we're just starting this work and uh, we think there, there are probably more, um, more interesting and more effective ways to incorporate the site information other than using um, attention mechanism. Finally, we think um, this framework can be very effective beyond fashion domain and another direction we look at is to extend this to natural image domains. Um, so we think this is a very interesting direction and we um, really encourage people to join us and uh, solve the challenges. So here are some re resources um, that we are sharing. Um, first one is fashion, fashion IQ data set and the challenge. So we're hosting the challenge um, at ICCV 2019 workshop, um, and uh, the deadline is September. Also, if you're interested in running our code, um, here's the URL. And if you're interested in the general problem setting of applying natural language for uh, image, or image or visual information retrieval, 
Um, so we are also hosting a workshop at ICCB. Okay. All right. Okay, Wei, well, thank you very much. I mean, I found that very clear, and I'm not a vision researcher, so it was very, I thought, very well presented. Thank you. Um, so, time for questions. Uh, if you would like to ask a question, please unmute. It's the little red microphone button at the bottom of your screen when you mouse over it. Um, IBMers, please remember this is an open talk, so avoid confidential questions. Any questions for Hui? So while people are figuring that out, I'll ask one. Uh, wait. So I understand that the underlying mechanism takes a lot of work, and clearly this is a multi-year effort. At some point, you need to do user studies, though, as to whether they like interacting with this combination, or if there's um, just an HCI aspect that they they don't feel comfortable with. So do you have plans for um, a user study as well? Yeah. So um, we have some limited experience with user study. So we have not did um, we have not done very extensive work on that, such as writing a paper on it. But um, as I said, you know, actually in our first paper we did do um, a small scale user study internally to compare the attribute based methods and the proposed natural language based methods, and the differences are quite. Um, quite obvious. Um, second, we also showed the demo at a CBPR demo track. So you just have a conference um, audience that come and play with it. So in general, I felt like this is a, people, people like this way of um, this new, new, new method of interacting by of retrieving at least fashion images. Um, but of course, I think to actually have it to be real world applicable, we need more work, perhaps both from the model side and also from the uh, UI design. Okay. Are there any other questions? Please unmute and feel free to ask. Okay. It looks like not. So, Clay, thank you again very, very much for the presentation to the attendees. This will, this was will be the last AIH and seminar for, for the summer, so enjoy July and at least part of August. We'll start up again in the fall um, as the students get back to the AIH in school. So thank you, Wei, and thank you all the attendees. Thank you, Brent.